as well. Ah, and here we have uh, Maxwell Divana Supa. Mm -hmm. so, Hello, and, Maxwell. Uh, welcome. Take the floor. <laughs> can you hear us? Yes. Can... Okay. So, Miro, do you want to start? Uh, uh, John Paul will start. Excellent. So, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome Ravim, welcome Miroslav, welcome Ivana, welcome Maxwell, welcome everyone else and our other speakers who are on the way. Uh, it's a wonderful day today, as you all know. Today is the International Day of Youth, which is celebrated worldwide with the support of the UN and also with the support of all young people and young supporters and key experts working on youth issues around the world. So, we are having a hangout happening today. And the title of our Hangout, this Google Hangout, is United Nations and the year 2015, a window of opportunity to enhance youth engagement in global challenges action. So the rationale is we have to enhance the participation of young people to address global challenges. And the Hangout is organized by the International Association for the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges, IAI, which is a youth focus when accredited civil society organization based in Klagen Ford in Austria and also recognized seeing the participation of young people in sustainable development agenda in the, in the, the real plus 20 global UPC competition and all the work AI has been doing to side events workshop and empowerment groups. Uh, we want through this online debate to engage our audience and our speakers in one hand, to highlight the central role of multi stakeholders and the leadership potentials of young people in this respect for effective implementation of the emerging post 2015 global development agenda. We all know the UN is mobilizing citizens worldwide to engage for the post 2015. So that is why we have a new global development agenda that is supported all around the world. And before continuing with this introduction, I would like to welcome all of the speakers. Hello, Dainai. Hello, hey. Sabrina. <laughs> Hello, uh, Kekashang also, and Nathan. It's wonderful to have you all here. We are already starting with the Hangout. And also, uh, for your information, the Hangout is broadcasted on YouTube, which means all what we are going to discuss now will be recorded, and we can have this documented somewhere, and we can see music all around the world. Uh, one quick advice would be uh, when you don't speak or you don't have the floor, you can just mute your microphone so that we don't have any background noise uh, disturbing the discussion, and that would be appreciated. And also remember when you take the floor to speak as a speaker or participant or contributor, just remember to put on, to switch on your microphone so that we can hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, on another hand, the objective of this Hangout is also to uh, contribute to this discussion about how the post-2015 development agenda means of implementation could facilitate resource mobilization by and for young people in order to enhance their engagement in action to address global challenges at the local, national and regional level as well as at the global level. Uh, we all know and we are all aware that there is no doubt that an effective resource mobilization mechanism for the global partnership on youth in the post-2015 agenda is needed. It's the time to discuss the board, and it's the time to raise our voice to ask for it. In that case, we see 2015, that should be considered as a global development opportunity, as a window of, of opportunity to enhance youth engagement in global challenges action through governance, innovation, and innovative resource mobilization. We have a wonderful set of speakers who will be engaging with us today. And we are very grateful to have you because we know today is the International Day of Youth and it's also a busy day for everyone all around the world. But we have the good chance to have you all attending. And the locations where our speakers and participants are based in is also something we should highlight here because we have uh, Ravi Karkara, who is a global children and youth advisor working with UN Habitat and the UN Millennium Campaign. He's based at the moment in New York, in the USA. Uh, thank you, Ravi, for training us. Uh, Ravi will be talking about the result from 
by World 2015 survey and also the World We Want consultation, and it will highlight what do young people want. We have Dr. Miroslav Holzer, who is based in Austria, in Klagenfurt. He is the Secretary General of IEI, the organization hosting and organizing this hangout. Dr. Polzer is going to talk about the Global Challenges Youth Engagement Award. How can this award enable, enable youth action for the future we want? We have Ivana Savic uh, from the United Nations Major Group of Children and Youth, and she's also a young leader working on different issues, and she's based in Serbia, in Zagreb. And um, Ivana is going to also engage on the way the major group for children and youth is supporting uh, the global UN system and also the UN work to engage young people and citizens. And of course, we have Keka Shambasu and uh, Nathan Guyen. Uh, they are both uh, facilitators and focal points of the UNEP major group for children and youth. Thank you for joining as well. And I would like to also acknowledge the presence of uh, Danae Espinoza and Sabrina Marquin who are the two focal points of the youth constituency at the UNFCCC, the UN climate change uh, process. And they are all at the moment in uh, Taiwan, am I right? And they will be participating from Taiwan. And they have a key supporter with them that you can see uh, behind Danai at the moment. He is called uh, <laughs> Bing Yang. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong with the pronunciation of the name, and many of us know him for his leadership role in climate change movement and uh, through Yungo as well. And of course, we have uh, Maxwell Adieu, who is in Ghana at the moment. Maxwell is one of those key supporters of IAI and also to the work we do to engage young people in systemic thinking and innovative approaches. And Maxwell has been doing a wonderful work recently, and I'm sure he's going to share this outcome and input with us. So I didn't forget anyone, and my name is Jean-Paul Brice Afana. I'm the head of youth, uh, youth programs of IAI. I also come from Cameroon, uh, which is based in Africa, like Ghana, and it's wonderful to have almost all regions of the world represented here. And later, Nathan will also tell us from where he's calling from, and Pekka Shang is at the moment based in New York, like Ravi. So without waiting too long, and after giving this uh, presentation of everyone and also what is the role of each of us, and also the background of this Google Hangout, I would like to welcome our first speaker, who is Ravi Karkara. Uh, Ravi, as I said before, is going to talk about the results from my World 2015 survey and the World We Want consultation. And he will be highlighting what do young people want. Thank you so much, Ravi. You have to talk. If you can just switch on your microphone, please. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, fellows. Thank you very much, Jean-Paul and Miro and everybody else. It's a great honor to be part of this uh, important Google Hangout. And I think what I really like about this is on the basis of accountability, both in terms of government accountability, also financial accountability. So as I was asked to speak on the My World Survey, we are actually celebrating, all of us, about 3.5 million votes in the SG's, uh, Ban Ki-moon's led survey. It's called the My World 2015 where we invite everybody out there to choose from 16 priorities. And out of the 16 priorities, choose six top priorities. And I've been asked to share what is the number and how this really came about. So as we speak right now, we have over 2.7 million voters who are below the age of 30. And in the age group of 16 to 30, we have about 2.2 million voters. I still remember the day two years ago when I was asked, will young people participate in the UN My World Survey? And it's people like on this Google Hangout and many more who proved everybody wrong because people were very skeptical. And basically, young people participate from all walks of life, from everywhere, from rural communities to slums, to youth clubs, to universities and in schools. And I must acknowledge uh, uh, many, many different global youth advocates and also invite you to become a global youth advocate if you want to become a strong technology for development advocate. So what we're seeing in the results is that out of the 2.2 million youth voters, we see at least 65% of them who've got the votes are offline voters using ordinary paper ballots. And the rest have used the voting from the SMS campaign and from online. So majority of voters are really coming from the global south with Asia, then Africa, Middle East, Latin America really leading the way. 
important piece is unpacking what they're telling us. They're telling us that uh, like the MDG carry forwards, the good education is very critical, healthcare is very critical, and so are job opportunities. But if you also analyze what came out of the 88 national consultations, the 11 thematic consultation, the recommendation from the high level panel, and also the conclusions from the open working group proposal, which Ivana will talk about later, you see that there's much more than just talking about traditional issues. Right now, as we speak on the Google Hangout, uh, we see very clearly on the My World survey that honest and responsive government are put as number three priority. So youth are not just saying that we just not want to be employed. They're also saying that we want to be part of good governance, transparency, no corruption, and also youth-centered governance, democracies, and so on and so forth. And that is seen as an overarching piece, especially strengthening their youth engagement in the development and in the implementation of post-2015. Now, of course, the other area which has come universally across the world is protection from crime and violence and equality between men and women. So we see that this issues that are being raised by youth everywhere must be responded to. In terms of the strategy that we adopted, we had young people participate themselves like you voting, but also bringing their peers. But the most beautiful thing which must be acknowledged is that young people did not only limit their outreach only to other young people. They carried forward intergenerational partnerships. We have images of girls in Rwanda sitting with elderly women and asking elderly women, what do you have to say? In Cameroon, we have recently had a fantastic work done by Divine who reached out to children and youth with special needs. And similarly, Akash in Pune, for example, has done brilliant work reaching to girls in schools. But let me come back to the most crucial thing from the work which we have analyzed. In a recent analysis of the work which I've been doing, one thing which comes as a huge gap is that yes, there is a youth bulge with 1.8 million. Yes, youth are on the streets and are online. Yes, we've been hearing the youth focus for the last few years. But what is sad is that we have not adequately responded to youth in terms of structures, mechanisms, and processes that strengthen youth participation. Must acknowledge the major group on children and youth, which has done remarkably well in the last few years from Rio Plus 20 and even now. And many youth led organizations, especially from Global South, who have stepped up in the last two years. But where we are failing and where the gaps are really on investments. So, in our recent study, which you and Habitat carried out, we looked at the global youth aid architecture and tried to understand how OECD DAC countries, through their aid, 0.7% uh, are investing in youth. Very, very sad figures to share with you. Most of the work and the work which is being shared by OECD DAC and supported is only limited to youth employment. There is no conversation on youth employment and entrepreneurship development. There's a global call coming out of the World Conference on Youth on establishment of Global Youth Skills Day. So we even be asked for a Global Youth Skills Day who will invest who will bring in these investments? Similarly, the other area that we are really looking at is that where is the private sector money? Where is private sector accountability on creating jobs and entrepreneurship opportunities for both young women and young men across the world? A recent conclusion of the G20 Youth Entrepreneurship Alliance meeting uh, in uh, Sydney concluded the uh, uh, and made a very strong case on creating a global fund on youth entrepreneurship and skill development. Similarly, a work which UN Habitat has been doing is also to see if there is a global coalition of youth-focused foundations. So we, right now we are trying to bring different foundations coming from Africa, Asia, Middle East, uh, Latin America, and North America and Europe to see whether, where and how can we well be better coordinated? How can we really invest in young people so that invest, uh, youth people, so young people can really get that investments? And best example I can give you is Urban Youth Fund, which is supported by UN Habitat. And that fund is one of the few funds which gives directly allocated to young people and youth-led organizations. And the strategy is that it's only limited to $1 million. We can only support limited youth-led organizations. The applications we get annually range from 7,000 to 9,000. And we're not able to respond to all of them. So we have this huge uh, you know, uh, uh, application process. Young people are saying that we want to be funded, not because you know give us a job. Young people want to create their own social entrepreneurship, whether they're sitting in slums or in villages or in their urban settings, but there is no matching investments that are being there. So really calling upon a strong financial accountability at local, national, regional, and global levels so that young people can really be treated and invested upon as important actors. So this is a critical area, as it was said earlier by Miro, and the world is coming for setting up the next 
a development agenda in 2015. We also have an important process of ICPD that is culminating. We have the Beijing Plus 20 on women's empowerment, women's rights, and gender equality, making a very strong case on investment on young women. And also in 2016, we have a critical uh, moment on the urbanization agenda where UN Habitat has been asked to conduct the Habitat three very strongly looking at the 65 percent of the urban population which is young and seeing accountability measures there so please join our call with us in Glocha and many others with you in Habitat so that we can really see investments for young people as we move on to post 2015 because we cannot do any implementation without young people and their partnerships thank you so much thank you very much Ravi I think you really set the theme of this discussion because there's a gap about youth engagement and where is this gap of investment and who will invest and also who will bring this investment on the table. That's the big question. And I think we can talk about the big open debate at the moment because we cannot ask young people to take action and be engaged in development issues and development agenda all around the world. And then we don't support them by providing them with enabling environment, infrastructure, and also enough resources that will make their work impactful. And that's a big question. And also, I'm sure all the speakers in this hangout recognize in your uh, inspiring thought what is the main issues about and how could we identify it all together because we have to bring all this perspective and also recognize that despite the lack, the lack of funding and resources for young people work, there are so many of them who are doing amazing work with the little they have in their hands. And we have many of them attending this main uh, all because at the moment. And I totally agree. And I'm sure other speakers and participants here think that these issues is needed to be discussed about. So thank you very much, Ravi. And I'm going now to give the floor to our next speaker, who is uh, Miroslav Polzer, Dr. Miroslav Polzer, the Secretary General of IAI. Uh, but before coming to um, Miroslav Polzer, who will talk about the Global Challenges Youth Engagement Award, because this is an answer that he would like to bring. We want first to hear from those young people who are sitting on this table, on this hangout with us at the moment, because they heard about Ravi. They know about the issues. They face it every day. They do a lot of efforts to see uh, youth engagement being recognized, youth engagement being enhanced. But they also face so many challenges that need to be known and also need to be shared with all uh, other stakeholders and also decision makers around the world. So I would like to welcome first Keka Shambasu, uh, who is a UNEM Major Group for Children and Youth Focal Point. And she and Nathan, Nathan will be intervening just after her, will be sharing with us what is the situation within the unit major before she can you. Please get your Thank you. Thank you, Shapo. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Kekusha Basu, one of the global coordinators for UNEP MPC Rai. I'm 40 years old and I live in Dubai, UAE, but I'm in New York right now. And I'm really pleased to be a part of this important discussion on how to enhance in youth engagement as we formalize the post-2015 goals and agenda. So as a global coordinator of UNEP MPC Rai, I would like to to start by giving a status uh, update of our process. So UNEP fully recognizes the importance of engaging major groups and other stakeholders as national allies and partners and appreciates the perspectives that they bring to the table, valuable research and advocacy functions they perform, and their role in helping foster long-term broad-based support for UNEP's mission. So engage, uh, enhancing engagement of civil society has been one of the key focus areas of the Secretariat and they have taken a lot of steps in this regard. For example, our inclusion in the engagement of the CPR. It is noted that it is to be noted that we, we are the MGFC and but we are not a making body and neither to be controlled funding. All funding is decided by our secretariat and our role as representatives of our constituency is to facilitate their contribution to decision making, planning and implementation of policies and programs for sustainable development at regional, sub-regional and national levels 
through participation and it has ownership in processes. Uh, with regard to the topic, whether the various post-2015 discussions are going to enhance civil society participation uh, or not, or that, and there are several significant gaps which need to be addressed to funding, especially with regards to our constituency. And in the changing global scenario, youth migration is a reality, and this throws up key challenges of, and millions of youth are growing up in countries different from their country of birth, and I think there needs to be greater focus on finding an answer to this problem, because uh, it's so that these youth can find ways and means of representation without any bias. And I also believe that youth engagement would benefit immensely with of 86 of the Free Plus 20 outcome document, which calls for the institutionalization or, uh, of ombudspersons or a high commissioner for future generations. If this too is missing from the set of goals proposed by the OWG. And we're the future on our development. And we must continue to ask for this with one voice. Um, also, children have form a significant part of our constituency, and the post-2015 agenda must have specific uh, Take up, Sean. Uh, we can't hear you at the moment. And no, it's a young girl. Okay. So, same depression. Okay. Yes? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you okay. now. Yeah, so as I was saying, within our constituency, specific focus is required for Russia. And even though we're in the 21st century, millions of young girls still face the same oppression and boundaries. Uh, we have some background and technical problems with uh, from Kekashan side. So I would like to then introduce and welcome Nathan, uh, who is also working closely with uh, Kekashan. They do the same work, so they might have the same uh, type of input with different point of view. And uh, Nathan, if you can just complete on what Kekashan said uh, until now, uh, that would be appreciated, please. And I know you are going to focus on the key challenges that UNEP major group for children and youth face in terms of engaging young people in UNEP work and also including how resource mobilization has been identified as a key issue. Yes, thank the you. yes, thank you, John Paul, for the terrific moderation. Um, I'll actually yeah be speaking more on what you said, uh, Kyaksha. I'll, I'll let if, if Kyaksha ma re manages to connect, she'll be able to, to tell you more about what she's been working on in terms of um, the uh, High Commissioner for Future Generations. Um, and yes, this is extremely relevant because um, as we're talking now with the major group of children youth, it re it represents a very important constituency to um, to to have the voice of, of youth and and children. Um, at the United Nations level of negotiations. Um, and what people might not be familiar with is that each, each um, UN, most, some UN uh, divisions have their own separate constituency. For example, the UNFCCC has their own youth constituency, that's which is separate from the one from UNEP, which is also separate from, from the one from the post-2015 process. And that might be a bit confusing at first. Um, and UNEP MGCY is, is one of them. So we work, we work with the one base in Nairobi um, with the United Nations Environment Program. And, the, um, and what's really interesting is that although our constituency often feels that there's a lack of um, outreach or um, a lack of clarity in terms of how we work as a major group. Um, what's surprising is that when we look at the, uh, the rest of the major group system within the UN, children and youth are often actually the most organized and, most, and, and the, the constituency that, the, that participates most actively in the process. Um, 
and that's that, that's very encouraging in terms of understanding how we relate to the rest of, of society participation at that level. Um, so yeah, we often get um, complement on a level of organization and, and participation in the process. And I think it's also very much linked to how youth today are engaging in social media. Because in, the, in traditional work, um, where people use you know, traditional email and one-on-one -on -one relations, social media um, and the new uh, ICT tools have really helped um, children, youth who, who are more familiar with these technologies to engage in collaborative um, input and feedback and to make it a more democratic uh, participation online. Um, however, the, the challenges that we face, as, as you were mentioning, is um, mostly in terms of increased participation and capacity as well as representation. We, so first of all, um, the process is quite complex. Um, when when you first enter the United Nations process, it's quite difficult to understand everything that's going on around you. So often, um, I've, I've been to a few conferences, and what I mentioned to, to uh, people is that the first conference is really your phase of exploration. You're sort of getting into what it looks like to, to be participating. Um, and then from then on, you get a better grasp of how it works, and then you can um, prepare more to, to respond well to what's happening. Um, often we see people going in, they're part of a delegation, and they're trying to cover everything that's happening, and that's, that's pretty much impossible, because you really need to focus um, and find what is your key interest in the process and how you can, you can contribute to that process. Um, I'm working, as, as a focal point though, I'm working more on the uh, capacity building of the constituency. Um, so what we've been uh, looking at in the past uh, few months since the beginning of the year is to have a sort of convergent process between the constituencies, so between UNEP, Major Group of Children and Youth, the Major Group of Children and Youth from the post-2015 process, and the climate change process. We've been seeing that there's uh, development, climate change are um, cross-sectoral issues. Um, they are issues that need to be dealt with together. Um, in the climate change process, uh, there's not a lot of talk on development. Um, in the post-2015 process, there's little engagement on climate change because a lot of people think that that's something that should be left to the UNEF Triple C. Um, so that's that's something we're trying to bridge now. We're trying to make it easier for children and youth who are participating at the UN level to um, to have a better so when they enter this process, it's easier for them to understand how the different um, constituencies work, and when they do provide feedback, it trickles down to all three of them in the relevant process. So they're not confused, they're not overwhelmed by the information going to all of them. So that's what we're working on right now. So not only in terms of um, making it easier in terms of the the uh, the process and the institution, but also in terms of the language, the feedback. Um, because the uh, the, parts, the youth participants um, that input on climate change mostly focus on UNFCCC, that means their, ex, their, their expert work does not really trickle that much into the post-2015 process. So we want to have that convergence process where it all feeds back naturally and then each uh, constituency and process gets the same amount of expertise um, that is received. Thank you very much, Nathan. And, and the highlight of creating this, connecting those dots, is really uh, necessary because UNEP, UNGO, UNFCC, UNCSD, High Level Panel of Sustainability, all of those processes are interlinked and they also work on the same objective like how can we make the world a better place to live and how can we engage more citizens to take more approaches to engage themselves and also see their role as very important and relevant. And you also highlighted the fact that the UN system language is sometimes very complex for young people. And this is something we have been facing for years already. And I remember uh, different uh, youth constituencies and groups were asking the UN to have a more friendly language. That is also part of allocating more resources to young people. And this is something uh, the youth constituency at the UNFCCC has been doing for many years already, advocating to have the voice of young people. And I remember all focal points of young who have been working hardly, like the UNEP coordinators as well, UNEP major group of children and youth coordinators. 
has been asking for similar requests, not only to the UN, but also to other stakeholders, including key leaders, head of states, uh, philanthropies, and key engaging climate activists around the world. And when I see the link between what is requested for UNEP for improving the participation of young people, I also see the link with what is requested for young group to improve youth participation. And I also see the link with the major group of children and youth at the high level panel. So I would like then to welcome the input of uh, Sabrina Markans and Danae Espinoza, who are at the moment in Taiwan. And they are there for an uh, intersessional meeting of the UNFCCC. And this shows that their engagement is not limited. They have to advocate a lot. They have to spend overnight uh, doing this so that they can really be there and bring the voice of young people being heard. And I know Jung is also like uh, UNEP Major Group for Children and Youth, a key example of advocacy work by young people. And that's why, that's why we would like to hear from Sabrina and Espin and Danai. Thank you so much. And thank you again, Nathan, for your contribution. Me? Well, okay. Well, um, well, first of all, thank you so much for your invitation. And it's a pleasure to see new faces and to see the no faces uh, here in the Google Hangout. <laughs> um, well, um, um, Jungo. <laughs> well, Jungo, uh, fortunately, Jungo has a lot of uh, young people, uh, very active young people right now. And, but we are facing a lot of key challenges uh, to engage young people because we are right now a huge group. So how to how to Jungle can engage uh, all the global voices uh, to be here in the UNF Triple C process? It's a kind of uh, very hard work. But um, many young people in Jungle, we are doing our best to create that great platforms and to uh, push uh, some great projects uh, with young people, uh, between young people, for young people, but even with the, the people who is not young. Well, everyone is young, but I mean it in, 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 in a literal way. So I think um, Jungo is facing a global agenda, and we are facing two important challenges that uh, this year will be COP20 and COP21, but at the same time, the post-2015 agenda, who is related with uh, the global uh, agreement about climate change, because you know the SDGs and the MDGs, so everything is combined for these two or three years. So the, the youth international climate movement, or Jungo, we have to be more coordinated to face uh, all these uh, real challenges, but I think Sabrina can mm -hmm can talk more about overwork and the work of Jungo. Uh, yeah, so thank you for, for the invitation. And uh, yeah, to complete what um, Danae just said, uh, one of our key challenges today is to, to, to better introduce and promote the, the youth participation uh, within the UN process, and especially on climate change issues. And for that, we have decided to launch a platform, a virtual platform, called Youth Climate Action. And so, the goal of this action, uh, this uh, I mean, this platform, is really to gather a long term, on the long term, a all youth-led initiative from all over the world to fight against climate change, but also to raise the number of activity launched uh, by young people, and to enhance the visibility of young activity <clears throat> um, at the local level and to enhance the youth participation at the different level of decision making and um, and so this platform is uh, will be launched um, on August 23rd and uh, so one month before the uh, Ban Ki Moon uh, climate summit. And the idea is because the, claim, the, the, the UN Climate Summit will be an action summit, and we really want to highlight, uh, to take this opportunity to really highlight uh, what young people do on the ground uh, for this occasion and to continue and to pursue this platform um, after the Ban Ki Moon Summit and in order to, to have like a bigger uh, virtual uh, platform 
for COP20 and COP21. And, uh, you know, though, yeah, to, 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 to promote youth activity, but also to promote youth as an uh, agent of change. And so how we can uh, be, um, be at the same tables as other stakeholders. And also, that is, uh, that is one point of action. And we also want to collaborate more with other young people on the other topic because 2015 will be like a global, like it's a, a, a huge ad agenda. So it's for um, climate change, but also SDGs. And we are right now discussing or talking with MGTY and UNEP, uh, MGTY and also, yeah, other stakeholders and other organizations to see how we can collaborate and especially on a communication way to highlight and to collab like highlight our our activities and how we can gather more people and connect the issue together. And also really important to to talk and to discuss with other stakeholders uh, within the UNFCCC process. And especially NGOs and other like stakeholders, in order to see how we can collaborate and work together and push some point of the agenda in general for ambitious uh, climate agreement. Yeah, and uh, in general for youth, it's a little uh, difficult to um, create uh, the correct space. Well. Climate change, in fact, is not an easy topic, and sometimes in some agendas, uh, climate change uh, doesn't appear as a real uh, problem, a real global problem. Um, no matter if we are facing or no matter if we are seeing that climate change is, is a real a real thing and it's happening and it's affecting us, uh, some agendas uh, do, um, don't contemplate it. Uh, one example, and I think Rabika Kara was I was there in the um, World Conference on Youth. Uh, climate change was a very difficult topic to include it in the agenda. So Brazil, Mexico, and another country I don't remember was uh, yeah Paraguay uh, pushed the agenda into the into the declaration of youth, Colombo the Colombo declaration of youth. So uh, we have to see that um, many young people is very active uh, about climate change and sustainable development. So we try to push uh, another agendas to support, obviously, the climate change topic because it's very important for everyone and especially for the that we are the, the, the youth climate project that you just put together that is uh, ongoing is one of those key initiatives that is needed to really get people know that there are a lot of challenges for resource uh, availability to engage young people in the climate change agenda and then young people would like to see more support coming from different stakeholders and from a larger audience. And I remember when uh, Miroslav and myself, we saw this youth climate re uh, project uh, launched by Yungo under your leadership, we were very impressed and this didn't happen before because Yungo has been, for example, engaging to get support to enhance youth participation directly with government sometimes or with other NGOs involved in the process. But now it's something that is more public because if people are not aware that there's an issue or a problem they don't know about, and this is exactly what we would like to also highlight in this hangout, that there's a key problem, there's a key issue that needs to be uh, uh, promoted and talked about so that people are aware of and then they join the solutions we would like to raise to address it. And it's very uh, important to also have the perspective from Yungo. So thank you very much. And I will I will share here uh, in the chat dialogue uh, the link to the Youth Climate uh, Action Project initiative by Yungo so that people uh, can uh, learn about it more and also engage themselves as well and see the link between the hangout we have now and this type of initiative we would like to start and uh, multi uh, multiply as much as possible. And uh, in that note, thank you again Sabrina and Danai. And uh, I would like now to introduce uh, Ivana Savic, uh, who is joining us from Serbia. And just for you, uh, just a quick note, after Ivana, we will have an open discussion with everyone 
on uh, the input provided so far but by all those youth groups, youth constituencies, and those legitimized youth uh, leaders who are working so hard around the world to engage young people in global development agenda, including sustainable development and climate change. And after Ivana, we will hear then from uh, Miroslav Polzer and also uh, Maxwell Adieu, who are also going to share with us two very important initiatives that one of them already took place and one is going to take place. I will provide more details uh, on that before they start talking with us. So Ivana, uh, if your connection allows, please, you are welcome. So it might be that Ivana uh, Oh, no, no, she's training now. Okay, please, Ivana, you have the floor. It's for the bad connection, not being able to um, join you via video. Um, I would like also to thank all the previous speakers. It's really hard to speak at the end after everything that has been um, said so far. Uh, so um, I will talk about the major group for children in need that came from uh, the Rio process, initial process from the Earth Summit in 1992, and how it actually involves and what are the, the challenges that we actually have. And I think it's quite common for all the youth constituencies. So what we mentioned, major group for children in youth, uh, UNEPs, uh, UNGO, they're all mechanisms of participation of young people, and it's a important step forward because now we have a space where we can actually voice opinions or actually we think we can voice opinions because we have a place where we can do that but in order to uh, articulate um, concerns and address the issues we also need to have enabling environment for doing so so it's not easy it's not just actually enough to give a space and say like now you can voice what you have to say but you also need to have other conditions or preconditions to be fulfilled in order to be efficiently uh, in what you're doing and also address those issues. Because we also need to think that the, the society that aims to develop and needs to invest in their youth. And without investment in young people, there is no investment in social capital and there is at the end no investment, ultimately no investment in, um, in um, on the future development and also social capital. So uh, one of the challenges that we've been facing with young people is actually those unwritten rules that we have in such processes. And those are the, the things that are not directly linked to participation, but actually greatly shape the participation of young people, starting with inputs. How do you do that? I think Nathan um, and other previously mentioned it's kind of hard, and especially you, Jean, um, it's really hard to know the language because you need to have a certain type of knowledge in order to, to, to address those issues and to be understood by the policymakers, which is not something that is quite uh, understandable by young people, not because they don't want to, but it's something that is learned. And it's a part what I said, unwritten rules, that you actually learn by experience and in order to learn that, you, you need to have experience that takes time and commitment and resources. Um, Another thing is participation is really demanding experience. It requires knowledge. Um, I think young people have the knowledge, it's just they don't know the specific language that they need to use in order to be understood. Uh, then there are resources for participation. Um, with, with the young people, they're in the transition period from the childhood to adulthood and trying from, and actually the period from independence to the, to, to, from actually dependence to the independence. So um, in the period of youthhood, you have a lot of burden. You also need to educate yourself to develop. You also have personal development, but also you, you learn actually how to contribute to your own community. And community is such is not open for the youth participation. And what actually also happens a lot is that young people are participating and quite heavily shaping the societies and also the development, but are not in the traditional ways or, or the ways that we actually perceive to be participation. So we also kind of um, perceive young people as not participating, although they are greatly shaping um, the, the development. So. Um, 
on one hand, we don't have those uh, preconditions, education, how to participate or how to con contribute. And when you do have, you're also faced with a lot of discrimination in the society that is based on age. And we still have not adequately, or actually, I don't know if we actually adequate at all address the issues of discrimination based on age, especially for young people. That means that actually accessing the mechanisms such as the the um, the MGCY, UNEP, UNGO, and etc. Especially for the younger uh, younger people, because you need to reach certain age, biological age, in order to um, to to be able to address or to contribute in shaping the development we want to see in 10, 15. Hello, huh? 10, 15 years. So. Um, what would be quite beneficial um, is also that, especially for young people in the future, and especially those mechanisms, both governments, but also the, the UN, but also the donor community, especially invest um, resources in young people's participation and also help them in, and create the enabling environment for their contribution. Because participating in the meeting costs money. It also costs time. And how and you cannot be expected that you're the one who is dependent and then you also need to support other processes. And there needs to be more intergenerational uh, dialogue and partnership between the younger civil society and the, the, the civil society, let's say older civil society or more experienced one, how to gain, um, how to reach those resources that will enable to have more efficient um, participation and more meaningful participation of young people uh, into the, the society and development as such. And I think that would be the key for the post-2015, especially when it comes to accountability for the post-2015, because there we will see how efficient we are. It comes, it relates also to the corruption, because this, the way how the system is organized now is that you're you're taught from very young age that corruption is the way how you do things, and that needs to be changed. And young people need to take a leading role in actually uh, creating the accountability mechanisms, especially for the new de sustainable development goals uh, in the future. Um, and. I think uh, with the, the new generations of the young leaders, um, they need really support in facilitating all those processes and also transferring that uh, that knowledge of participation and influencing the processes. And also, uh, on the other hand, there needs to be more support, especially from the national level, to engage young people, but not only to focus on the age, like biological age, so you can, for example, voice your opinion only at the age of 10, but like really nurture to be to be able to express in accordance with your age and your interests and capabilities to, to shape the new development agenda, because based on how we shape the, the new development goals, we will it, actually the implementation of the new development goals will heavily depend on the on the process we have put in place now, and it will reflect on the sustainability and ultimately on the um, salvation of the the earth. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ivana, and uh, also to to bring the perspective which is more broader and also covering different issues and also bringing this perspective that problems are interlink and also we can address them all together by having partnership and collaboration as well as intergenerational uh, partnership which is needed uh, because the elders and people who have been engaging in all those issues before young people who are engaging now have the experience and they are able and willing to share in order to help young people to find the right direction to address those issues and get into the right solutions and also the, the, the the, the, the input you brought, I see a direct link also with uh, what the Ravi said at the beginning of this hangout, like investing in young people means investing in social capital. Addressing problems today by engaging young people means we want to shape a, a future for tomorrow that will have citizens that are empowered enough to take action and contribute to positive solutions. So uh, we can empower young people 
just by approving global policies. We also need to empower them by providing them with the adequate enabling environment. And you really highlighted it very well, uh, Ivana, and I can't say it more than you because that's exactly the point where we want to reach to this discussion. Uh, so I would like again to thank uh, Ivana, Nathan, Kekashan, Kekashan sent to everyone her advocates because she needed to go to a UN meeting where she needs to do some advocacy for UNEP youth engagement. And also thank you to Sabrina and Danae. So now I would like to, and of course to Radhi who was who was speaking at, at the beginning. So now I would like to open the discussion to the debate about do we all understand the problem behind this first intervention and also how do we see it as a problem that will have a solution? And also, uh, is it possible for to work together and to engage others because this hangout is not only limited to the people attending it today, but it will be also used as a strong argument to show to people that yes, we have the right people saying the right thing and making the right demand. So now we want the right people who have the right resources to invest in the right people so that we shape together the right future. It's a lot of use of the word right, I apologize for that, but this is exactly the picture behind. So now I open the floor to a debate and discussion about this, and also feel free to bring your input, your perspective, and also to tell us how you see the collaboration, the partnership, and the initiative to be moved forward in order to address this missing resources to support youth engagement in global challenges, including climate change and sustainable development. And after that, we give the floor to Miroslav Polzer and Mast Well Adieu for the next input. Thank you. Is my work. So the, the process is simple. You just uh, raise your hand. I give you the floor. You open your microphone and you can go ahead. Please. I thought that Nathan Katz wanted to give the first input. Probably not. <laughs> Maybe Douglas would like to bring some input. Uh, everyone knows probably Douglas. Douglas uh, Williamson works at the Health Charter Secretariat in Costa Rica. He's also one of those people we count on when it comes the time to discuss about youth engagement. And since many years, since the first year I was involved in the Real Plus 20 process in 2011 and before, I always get support from him. And Miroslav here could also acknowledge this support. And uh, Douglas was also working with Noha Mahmoud, who was the youth coordinator at the Health Charter Secretariat. She's now working on some other issues. But Douglas is also using technologies and social media because he's the social media and communication officer of the Health Charter. Correct me if I'm wrong, Douglas. And this is also something that we highlighted uh, some minutes ago, like how do we use technologies and those tools that are available to engage more young people, but how do we also make sure that they have access to those technologies? So Douglas, please, if you have any perspective to bring in. Uh, your microphone is muted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Great. Uh, it's good to see some uh, some friendly faces on the call. Uh, beforehand, um, uh, that, that we've known, as you said, John Paul, we've known each other for a while. It's good, as always, to see Mito's smiling face on the call, uh, and I uh, was glad to hear Ivana as well, who uh, all all of whom um, I've worked with in the past. Um, as you as you mentioned in the, in your 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 thorough introduction, John Paul, uh, I work at Earth Charter International, which is based in Costa Rica, and Earth Charter International is a, a networking organization. We promote um, uh, ethics for sustainable development, and it's a very broad definition of, of sustainable development, which is defined in the Earth Charter. And of course, you're you're all welcome to to take a look at the Earth Charter and see how it might be relevant to your respective work. Um, yeah, indeed, as John Paul mentioned, I do work um, in social media and communications. Um, I think that, as you said, yes, it's very important that young people today who really uh, are are working so well together on these issues via social media, via um, new media tech, uh, technologies that they continue to, to do so. 
um, you know, this is a great example of, of how people are getting together to, to work. Um, just the other day, I, I had a, uh, another similar meeting um, about the, uh, the World Parks Congress, which is coming up later this year, and there's a youth initiative to, to come up with a new youth contract, uh, which, of course, you're all invited to participate in, and if you want some more information, you can, you can get in touch with me directly about that. Um, but, yeah, these are, these are all very important processes. I have to say that, um, as, as Ivana was explaining before, uh, the major group for children and youth has been um, very consistently working over many years uh, on engaging young people to participate in probably the most participatory process that the United Nations offers. And the, the major group is consistently commended for uh, the great work that it does, the passion of its members and the people who are involved in that process. Um, I think it, it's been a little bit unfortunate uh, recently because we had a change at Earth Charter International uh, with our, our youth coordinator and our previous youth coordinator Nora was much more engaged in that process and our, our present one is is less engaged in that process but uh, I continue to be hopeful that uh, Earth Charter International can participate in that and I'm, uh, I'm hoping that uh, in the future we'll be a little bit more organized and can can be a bit more engaged in, uh, in getting in back into that process. I know that um, you know the, the recommendations which were made by the Open Working Group and are going to be delivered soon to the General Assembly uh, or the high-level political forum. They're going to be, uh, you know, taking those recommendations. And that process, uh, from what I've heard, was a really, really excellent, inclusive process. And the youth uh, made a very, very positive impression on many of the people who I've spoken with. So uh, that only occurred because young people were working together online, working together... Uh, putting together uh, uh, papers and tools and working together in a very coordinated um, and collaborative way. Uh, I think that's the advantage of, of, this, uh, of, of these technologies and tools, um, and, and I think that that will continue and improve. One of the things I, I do feel like I want to say generally to young people um, and specifically the, the young people who are, are, are working in these processes that um, a lot of the a lot of the way that young people get engaged uh, in these processes which, which is totally useful it, it tends to be uh, it tends to be a, a, a kind of protocol which is not all that youthful and I would encourage anybody who's working in the youth section to not, you know, play play the uh, the grown up game, but don't lose the youthful enthusiasm. Don't uh, don't take that aspect of of hope, of energy, of fun, um, uh, of excitement about making the world a better place away. That I think is the the main strength of the youth movement and. I think it's been a little bit co-opted by the the um, sort of grown-up processes, but I really would like to see young people be a lot more youthful uh, in their engagement in the future. So that's my my sort of main recommendation. And of course, um, as I said, I would be very um, happy to continue participating um, as much as I can and, and supporting these processes. And of course, if anybody is interested in having or learning more about how to use the Earth Charter or sustainability ethics, I'm happy to participate and um, talk about that more extensively. So I want to thank you again for the invitation uh, and for inviting me to, to speak as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to continuing working on all of these uh, projects with all of you. So cheers from Costa Rica and thanks again. Thank you also very much, uh, Douglas, and also for your advice and also for offering your support to the work of young people. And also this support is just ongoing because you have been supporting us already for many years and for with different ways. And also the, the webinars idea that the Health Charter has been hosting for many times is also something that we would like to acknowledge here and to see how the support we would like to get and the resources we would like to uh, mobilize will be helping to keep 
continuing and supporting such initiatives that are coming from different relevant organizations. In this note, and by thank you again, Douglas, I would like now to welcome uh, Maxwell Adieu, who is in Ghana and uh, who is going uh, to focus on, uh, on the input and also the outcomes that was organized in the term of the workshop that took place in Accra in West Africa uh, during this year. And Max will be mainly focused on West African perspective and domestic resources mobilization potential in the context of the Accra West Africa workshop and global challenges youth and high city centers. And just quickly to, to give some background, um, in May this year, IAI supported a, a national workshop for West Africa, which was a regional workshop to, taking place in Accra in Ghana. And Maxwell was the main leader to push for this initiative to take place, and the government of Ghana was also supporting, and Maxwell will be sharing some more details about how this initiative took place and how this helped African youth in West Africa to understand that and engaging young people in global challenges by using ICTs is possible and also even in developing countries where sometimes ICTs are a bit limited to the audience. Thank you very much, Maxwell, and hopefully your connection will allow you to be very powerful. So, uh, Maxwell, we cannot hear you. Uh, maybe you can check your microphone. Uh, yeah. If you say something, maybe we will hear you this time. Hello. Yes, I think we can hear you. Uh, no, no. Uh, unmute your microphone, please. Your microphone is muted now. Okay. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, Maxwell has some <laughs> ICT problems and issues at the moment, which is also <laughs> a good coincidence because he was going to talk about ICTs and how this will help to engage young people. Uh, so Maxwell, we come back to you probably in the discussion, in the group discussion, or if your microphone works. So now I would like to welcome the input from Miroslav Polzer that we all know. And Miro is also one of these key supporters of the cause of young people around the world. And since 2011, 2010, 2011, that I worked with him, it has been just an amazing journey. And I hope uh, this journey will keep going on and that our efforts working together to address youth issues and global challenges will still be as amazing as it is now. So Miroslav, please, we would like to hear from you about the Global Challenges Youth Engagement Award and how this will enabling, enable youth action for the future we want. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean-Paul. Welcome everybody on this Google Plus Hangout on uh, post-2015 Development Agenda and uh, Youth Engagement. Uh, it's a pleasure and great honor to be uh, on this hangout with all of you and uh, to hear from you as the official youth constituency representative uh, what is being done already and what should be done uh, in the context of the emerging new uh, governance of sustainable development and post-MDG regime. So. Uh, as regards our organization, we are aiming really at innovative approaches to global challenges. We have it already in our name and uh, we are starting from two key problems that we uh, are identifying from the work uh, with uh, the young people around the world and uh, from looking at global challenges. We see that uh, global community is not effective enough in addressing global challenges and the reason is because it's uh, the UN system as the main global challenges response mechanism is primarily based on national governments and is not uh, integrating enough the potentials of uh, the vast uh, uh, range of uh, my stakeholders and especially all the young people, the knowledge, the workforce, the creativity, the hard power, the social energy, this could all help the United Nations system and we are working on the front of uh, innovating uh, their concepts 
and uh, also uh, ICT tools uh, to make this happen. And uh, I want to uh, share with you the, but it's now somehow not visible. Uh, I would like to share with you the some information about uh, our fundraising um, strategy for the post 2015 uh, agenda. We are starting from two problems that we identify. One is that young people uh, have difficulties to get engaged. For instance, in uh, environments like West Africa, there are so many committed and creative and intelligent people, but they can't find a way towards uh, this global community efforts for addressing global challenges. Uh, because they don't have the knowledge and the financial resources, as Ivana mentioned also. And on the other hand, we have people who are super rich. The world has now about 1,500 uh, billionaires in terms of US dollars, and uh, the, there are even uh, many wealthy people, like uh, the signatories of the Giving Pledge, who said they would give back to society half of their wealth. So uh, there's about 300 billion US dollars in the air that we uh, think should be channeled towards uh, uh, global youth efforts for addressing global challenges. And we want to use the post-2015 and the year 2015 window of opportunity to have really progress there. And uh, our uh, approach now is uh, to identify really those areas in terms of youth participation in the UN system where it makes most sense to channel resources to and uh, by uh, incentivizing investment in these areas by uh, offering awards, uh, global challenges, youth engagement awards to those uh, funders, uh, philanthropic institutions, but also public institutions who would uh, work with us and uh, uh, provide resources for youth engagement, and uh, that's uh, the reason uh, and uh, our invitation to the youth constituencies and to youth uh, organizations around the world to work with us on this, to help us and identify the financing needs, the financing gaps, and together then to uh, identify those uh, donors who would deserve to receive such a Global Challenge Youth Engagement Award. Our aim is to mobilize 15 million dollars uh, next year for these efforts and to channel them to through the uh, Global Challenges Foundation in New York, which would have 501c3 status and uh, we would uh, invite the campaign partners to be uh, co-owners of the governance of this foundation. And uh, more details you have in the chat window to this uh, Google Hangout, I've provided you with the link to our concept paper on this, uh, where you can in, uh, look at the details, and my contact details are there, and you're welcome to approach me and to work with us. And as I said, uh, uh, regions like West Africa or also Southeast Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, where really people are underrepresented in the UN system, they are our primary target regions also. And we have, uh, in addition to this financial resource mobilization targets, we have also uh, uh, concepts for ICT tools and infrastructure and uh, that's uh, where Maxwell can also share some insights and uh, uh, plans uh, on our future activities, and I would uh, stop here with this. Thank you very much, uh, Miroslav. And also, I encourage everyone to have a look on your the background of your input that you shared a few minutes ago. I will share it again here. Uh, and if we go there, and based on what you also said is how can we uh, launch a global campaign on global challenges youth engagement and resource mobilization and innovation and all the tools that are proposed are not aimed to conflict with what is already existing but is something that is proposed in order to create a new narrative of hope for the United Nations and the world based on the power of multi-stakeholder action and I, I do remember a very key sentence that I read a few days ago, which was saying, 
uh, it was about youth and citizen citizen engagement. Like authentic citizen engagement in institutional platforms can transform policy, mobilize resources, and empower bolder action. Local young people and citizen driven monitoring and accountability mechanism are essential for improving budget transparency and also for service delivery outcomes. And this is the uh, aim that we would like to bring like a vision where if citizens are enabled to pay attention, respond, engage, and take responsibilities and action to address global challenges, including young people, then they will be empowered to foster an enabling uh, environment for multi mutual accountability and resource uh, mobilization that is relevant and significant for the action they would like to take. And I, I see in the input of uh, uh, Miroslav Polzer uh, now, like, we can't count on one person or one institution. We need to count on several multi-stakeholder action and contribution so that the impact is bigger. If you take one, uh, one, uh, how can I call it, one uh, bird, for example, to transport uh, a stone, the bird could not maybe make it, but if you take a family of birds and then you give them the responsibility to transport the stone, they will find a way to work together to collaborate and to contribute all together. And then the stone will be moving from the starting point to the arrival point. And this is exactly the idea between behind this Blocher post-2015 campaign, the global challenges post-2015 campaign. How can we work together, mobilize more resources, and support the work of the United Nations? And I think uh, like I see from different inputs provided in this hangout, the possibilities are there. We just need to open the door and to be able to open ourselves to hear from it and also to contribute. So that those who are able to support and to contribute to this social investment using the force and the talents of young people can find a way where they can invest. Investing in the right place will always help to have the right achievement at the end of the day. So thank you again, Miroslav, for this input, and thank you, everyone, again. Uh, now I would like us to take just a few minutes before we end this hangout to discuss all together about all this learning journey, and then we will have a conclusion so that we don't uh, miss the point where we would like to arrive. When it's short, it could be powerful. When it's long, it could also be powerful. So we make it long and short, and all together, we can have a good discussion now. Please, just go ahead if you have any input to add or any comment. And maybe we can try again with Maxwell while waiting for everyone. Maxwell, is your microphone fine now? I can you hear us? If you can hear us, uh, can you raise your hand if you hear us well? Okay, so Maxwell is able to hear us, but we cannot hear him. And uh, it would have been very important and significant to have your input on the West Africa workshop that took place. Uh, or maybe I'll just give one minute uh, time to Miroslav to briefly come back to this, if possible, on behalf of Maxwell, please. Well, uh, let's uh, give the floor to Julio, uh, because he was also there, perhaps uh, Julio can also. Okay, Julio. Julio is from Togo, he's based in Togo, and he has been the, uh, the country coordinator of the Rio Plus 20 Global Music Competition. Julio, if you are there, we see you online, please, uh, if you can give us some short summary about the West Africa workshop that took place in Ghana, in Accra. Julio probably has some network problems. Okay. He's not there. So uh, then I will uh, share a little bit of information. It's uh, the, as you mentioned, uh, this cooperation started from the Rio Plus 20 Global Youth Music Contest. And uh, we've had very active coordinators uh, in Ghana uh, with Maxwell and uh, Julio in uh, Togo. Uh, up there in Burkina Faso and Purpose in Nigeria. And these young people, leaders, these global youth leaders, they uh, have been uh, able to mobilize the young people there on these global topics and wanted to uh, stay connected and engaged. And uh, when we have been planning uh, this year's international conference on sustainable development, innovation, and youth in Klagenfurt, Maxwell and Abda approached uh, us uh, asking them if they could be involved and we decided to organize a preparatory workshop in Accra on Global Challenges Youth and ICT. And uh, there 
the key point was that uh, the young people there have limited access to internet and that this is a systemic gap uh, which is also a challenge for global community which should take on the uh, responsibility to enable uh, global citizens uh, in these parts of the world to get also connected, to also contribute their resources to addressing global challenges. And uh, one institutional innovation, technological innovation we have uh, presented there and developed there where the global challenges use and ICT centers for which there would be also available domestic resources from the resource extracting industries and from the telecommunication industries and uh, from Texas, uh, the National Youth Authority of Ghana uh, offered to partner with us on uh, bringing such programs into all local and regional youth centers in Ghana and uh, Maxwell and uh, Peter Boermach, uh, the deputy director of the National Youth Authority helped also to uh, initiate uh, and led the process to organize IAI Ghana, which has now as a bank account and is really a fi fully functional local NGO, which will help to bring uh, the young people from Ghana, but also other West African countries into this global community, which uh, is supposed to implement the post-2015 development agenda. Am I right, Maxwell? Thank you. <laughs> Maxwell, thank you so much, Miro, and uh, welcome back again, Julio. So, um, um, we will have to conclude this uh, hangout. Uh, we will be very happy to hear from everyone again, but um, it will be good still to open a discussion, but I'm sure the discussion will not close even after this hangout, which means the discussion is open and will still be going on. And um, uh, just to summarize quickly the different input we had, we discussed about the importance for the world to be aware of the fact that young people are missing resources to engage themselves in addressing global challenges and they miss resources also to volunteer for the community in order to improve and enhance their participation in global sustainable development, including all other related issues. And then there is the time to use the year 2015 as the window of opportunity to enhance this youth participation through effective and efficient resources provided to young people. And there are different institutions and groups, young people legitimate groups that are working together to keep engaging young people in this agenda. And at the same time, those young people are facing all those challenges. But they can't keep working in that way because the resources are available and they would like to see those who have those resources and those who are willing to see the world becoming a better place for every citizen to support young people with those resources. And those resources are not only about financial resources, uh, technological resources, it's about all type of resources that will help to engage young people and also provide young people with enabling environment and adequate infrastructure for supporting their work. And what we also learned from this hangout is that there's no limitation about who can contribute. Everyone can contribute. Every citizen has a role to play to the global sustainable development agenda. And we can't miss the fact that the post-2015 development agenda is an opportunity for us to be engaging the world, the world in this debate. And that's why we had this hangout. And the speakers were all amazing, all participants and contributors as well. And once again, I would like to thank Radhika Kara from UN Habitat and the UN Millennium Campaign. I would like to thank again Dr. Miroslav Polser from IAI, the organization hosting this uh, hangout. I would like to thank Ivana Savic from the UN Major Group for Children and Youth. I would like to thank again Keka Shambasu and Nathan Guyen from UNEP Major Group for Children and Youth, as well as uh, Danai Espinoza and Sabrina Markan from the Youth Constituency at the UNFCCC, who they are, where they are focal points. Of course, I would like to thank also Maxwell Adieu from Ghana, who is IAI representative in Ghana. I would like to thank, of course, um, William Douglas Williamson from the Health Charter. Of course, I will not forget about thanking everyone else who joined us, Julio, Atsi from Togo, and uh, all other participants. 
it was amazing to engage with you in this discussion. It was also relevant for us to identify this issue, this problem, and to think together about the solution that is needed. It was also very important for us to understand that we can't work alone. We need to work together. We need to partner. We need to collaborate. An intergenerational partnership is also needed. Partnership among constituencies is needed. We can't have separate groups engaging in the work of the United Nations. We need to give one single force that is empowered enough to support the work of the UN and thus support our different government so that the development is locally and globally in hands and achieve the completion of Today is the International Day of Youth. I wish you all a wonderful celebration. Please keep smiling. There are hopes and we will make it happen. Thank you so much and goodbye everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.